All right, once again, I'll keep this super, super brief. We're gonna be doing a super sick scrolling title type of animation that I saw in, yes, I know, yet another Vox animation, but this one is super clean and it just uses a good little bit of techniques, some layering, and of course my favorite, texturing and sauce. But without further ado, let's just hop into After Effects where I've got a 1920 by 1080 composition set up, nothing fancy, 24 frames per second, just the usual. So right now I've just got this main composition set up and what we're gonna start out with is creating our background. And I'm just gonna do that by creating a solid by hitting Command Y. And then we wanna go for like a pale orangey type of color. So this is the color that I've picked is F1EBE0. -E and the color does matter a little bit because we want it to look kind of like aged paper almost. So that is the, the feel that we're going for anyways. But I'm gonna create that background super simple and then we are going to create our text you can always set this up to work with moguts as well so that you can make this once and then that's kind of it you can use in premiere over and over again and kind of adjust it how you want to or even just changing the text a little bit quicker i do have a video on moguts which will be linked up in the corner somewhere but for now create our text and we're just going to name a bunch of different categories because this is well a scrolling list so we need to be able to scroll through something all right so i have written out my little list and there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind when you make this list first of all is your font choice in this case i'm using instrument serif which is just a super nice serif font you can use whatever you want but you want it to match the look so any type of serif will work really good even something as simple as times new roman which you probably know from writing school papers works really well for this. So just pick something that's somewhat elegant and has a little bit of character to it. But I really like Instrument Serif and it's free, so why not, you get what I'm saying? But as you can see right now, I have this faded color look and that is a color we'll be switching to later. So you can just keep it at this color, which is DAD3C7, but we'll be creating a duplicate with one that is almost black as well. But we can just keep it at this color for now because this color is a little bit harder to find, which is essentially just the background color darkened a little bit. Next step is adding a little bit of animation to this. And the way we're gonna do that is actually super, super simple. We are gonna create a null and parent the text layer to the null. In this case, I'm gonna use void, which is a free plugin that you can get. And you just select your layer, hit the null, and then it creates that little anchor point. Now, as you can see, it made it up here because that is where our anchor point for this layer is. However, you can use motion tools to set it in the middle. It just makes it a little bit easier to go up and down if it's right in the middle. So motion tools to center it up and then void so we have it right in the center of our text. Now we can animate this. So we're gonna hit P and we are gonna start with the text at the very bottom and you can bring up your grid by hitting option and apostrophe. And then I just wanna center the last line that I have up right in the middle. So this looks about even. Then I wanna keyframe the null and move forward to something like a second and a half or something. You will have to play around with the timing. It depends on how many items you have in your list. And then I'm just gonna scroll down or move the position down, aka the scroll, to the one that I want to highlight. So let's say in this case, I wanna highlight this, which is subscribe, which you should do. So that is now in the middle and we don't have to ease the keyframes now. You can, I'll probably just end up using one of my flow presets, which you can get on patreon.com for Nepal. And you can also get the project file for this and all the other project files I've done for tutorials before. Now we have this text and I'm just gonna duplicate the text actually. And in this case, I'm just gonna change the fill color and just move it to be something that's pretty dark. This looks pretty good, like a, a dark grayish. And if I remove my grid, now we have this layer and this layer and they're both linked. So they both move because they're both in the null. I am gonna change the color of the black one to a different color so I know which is which. Just gonna make it a little bit easier. In just a minute. Next thing we're gonna do is let's go right to the beginning. We're gonna create a rectangle by selecting the rectangle tool up here. You can also hit Q and then we are just gonna add a stroke and we're gonna make this a black stroke. Realistically, you want this to be the same exact color as your text just for it to make sense. So you can just color pick that if you can't remember it. And then I'm just gonna draw out a rectangle and it's very important you want it to be wider than your widest. So it might be smart to start with it up here and set the stroke to something like three or four pixels will work pretty good, but just make sure that it is wider than your widest point. And then I'm just gonna center my rectangle up right in the middle and you can go back to the beginning. Okay, so this doesn't look centered in the rectangle and we know the rectangle is perfectly centered. So we'll just take our void and just move it down a couple pixels until our text looks centered within that rectangle and the same with the end. We just wanna make sure that looks centered. I think we have a good bit of spacing between the top and bottom here uh, on both sides and within the rectangle as well, which is Always a good thing to have because you don't want it to feel cramped. We are gonna name this outline rectangle. And then we are gonna duplicate this layer actually. And we're gonna remove this choke. And then we're gonna add a fill instead. 
you want it to either be black or white. Doesn't really matter, but one of those colors will work pretty good. And then we're gonna name this Rectangle Mask. And I'm just gonna change the color of this layer to maybe a pink, just so we know outside of also the names, we can see a visual difference on our timeline as well. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna select both my rectangles and I'm gonna search for path. And then I'm gonna right click and convert to a Bezier path on both of them. And that's just gonna make it a little bit easier in resizing it without it being distorted on the sides. Cause if you just change the scale slider, for example, it would distort so one side would be thicker than the uh, than the top and the bottom. So we're just gonna convert it to a path, a Bezier path. And I'm gonna link the path of the mask to the actual rectangle. And then right here where our animation is pretty much finished, we can keyframe that one path and we can just close this up because we don't need it anymore. It's been linked. Go back to the beginning. And then with my path selected here, you can see you get the little squares. I'll just shift click on one side, which is gonna deselect it and then click the side again and click and drag while holding shift to make sure it's straight. Again, good idea to have your guides up and then you wanna go almost to the middle and you wanna keep it even on both sides. So pretty much centered just like that. And now if I select these keyframes, I can add a sexy speed. Again, patreon.com for my poll. And now we have a nice little animation that looks like that, where it just opens up. We can hide the rectangle mask because we don't actually need to look at it at all. And we can go into our void, hit U to open up those keyframes and add the same easing. So now if you play that one back, we now have a rectangle that opens up and our text that scrolls. Now this is where the second text layer comes into play. So we are gonna take one layer, actually we can take both of them. And in the track map, we'll just pick whip that to our mask. And then for one of them, the uh, red one, which is our faded text, we are gonna invert that selection so that that shows everything that's outside the rectangle and our black text is what's inside the rectangle. So now it looks something like this. Super simple still, but very, very clean. And realistically, that's it for the main animation itself. Now we get to the sauce, AKA the fun part. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, since we are doing the box style and a personal favorite of mine, again, we are gonna add posterized time because it is sexy and we do love it and that's just how it is. And you will never make it in life if you don't like posterized time. But we're gonna set posterized time to 12 and good idea that I'm pretty bad at is naming the layers so we know exactly what they are, especially if you're working with other people as well. And then below that, I'm gonna add an another adjustment layer and I'm gonna add a turbulent displace to this and I'm not gonna animate this, it's just to introduce a little bit of texture into our, well, our composition. I'm gonna set the amount to something like 30 and then the size down to something like two. And all that's gonna do is create this little handwritten look almost, which is just super, super simple, nice little way of making it have a little bit more character and feel like it might actually be printed on paper or something like that. Next thing we can do is maybe add a little bit of zoom impact match cut type thing, which is just to add a little bit more visual interest because pretty much at this point, that's pretty much all we have for this animation, which is okay, but it, we can spice it up a little bit more. Once I've renamed this to tab displace, we can add another adjustment layer and I'm gonna sandwich it in between the tablet displace and the posterize time. So shift command Y again, and then we are gonna add a transform effect and we'll just name this zoom. Right off that comes in here, we're just gonna keyframe the scale and then we're gonna move forward a little bit and scale it up a good bit, maybe like 140. And then we're gonna take these keyframes and again, sexy speed, apply that. And then all we're gonna do is, let's say right about here, before it gets to like the halfway point, we are gonna shift command D to split the layer. And we're just gonna move this up a good bit and we're gonna trim this layer up a little bit and this one. And all that's gonna do is just give us a little bit of a match cut, which just has a little bit more character than if you were to just straight keyframe it, if that makes sense. So in this instance, it has a little bit of a punch, which is just a little bit more dramatic. Now, off of this, it, it's just standing still. So what you can do if you hit U is you can add another keyframe to let's say 145, so just an extra five pixels of scale. And what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna un ease all these keyframes by selecting them by clicking the scale over here and then command click in the keyframes. And then I'm just gonna select the two keyframes that I want eased and I'm gonna apply sexy speed. So now you can see the keyframes look like these little caps at the end, which just means that there's no easing from in this area. So if I were to just unease the singular keyframe over here, it, there would still be some easing applied to it, but we don't want that. We just want the zoom only to have that easing and then a very gradual five pixel scale 
towards the end of it. Let me ask you this. If you were reading this and you got to an interesting topic, like a headline in a newspaper, what would you do with it? Probably highlight it. So that is what we're gonna do. And to create a little highlighter effect, we are gonna hit G to bring up our pen tool and we're gonna remove the fill and then we are gonna add a stroke. You can make this whatever color you want. We can make it, uh, let's make it a pastel reddish for now. And all I'm gonna do is click down here where I want it to start and then go up into the other corner and just give it a little bit of a curve just to make it a little nicer. Who doesn't love curves? And I'm gonna increase the stroke width a lot because we really want it to be big, especially when we add the rough and edges to it. But then I'm gonna open up the contents and I'm gonna go to shape and then stroke. And then in the butt cap or the line cap, I'm gonna change it to a round cap, which then gives it this rounded edges. Anyways, now that we have that sorted, we can add a trim pulse, which is gonna add a little bit of animation to it. And we're gonna open that up and we're gonna go down into the end, keyframe that 100%. Then we're gonna go back a little bit and set that to zero. And again, we can add some sexy speed to it. Sexy speed is well, sexy. And we can stretch this out a little bit so it's not too quick because that is the general feel of the style. We don't want it to be too quick. I'm just gonna hit U to show all my keyframes. And I'm gonna drag this below all the texture, all that good stuff. But then you can go forward and right now you can't see anything. So we're just gonna change that to a multiplied blend mode. Super, super nice. Now we can go play around with the size a little bit. Maybe make it just a little bit smaller. And then with it selected, search for path up here. And then we can adjust this just a little bit so that it's not way, way, way too big, but just fits pretty good in here. And you can always change that for each one, but we need a little bit of texture because this doesn't look too, too nice. So we're gonna add rough and edges and create kind of like a brush pen look type of thing. And you can already see that adds just a little bit of texture. We're gonna increase the complexity all the way up to 10. And then we're gonna increase the stretch, which is then gonna give us just a little bit more texture long ways than vertical. And then you can play around with the border size to play around with how much it'll be affected by that. So maybe not too crazy, but something like this looks pretty good. Just a little bit of texture and you can always play around with the color to get exactly what you want. Maybe like a yellowish, a light yellowish color, maybe a little bit orangey in it like that fits the color scheme of this pretty well, which is like a muted, muted tone. Now we can hop on to adding a little bit more texture because we can never go wrong with texture. I have two textures, one from Texture Labs and one from Library of Congress. Let's just start with the Library of Congress one. This is a blank old newspaper texture and I'm gonna put this at the very top. And then with that in there, I'm just gonna scale it down to fit, rotate this 90 degrees and scale it up just a little bit to cover something like that. And it has a lot of really nice texture out on the sides as you can see. Let me just change this blending mode. Multiply tends to work pretty good for this. Just a nice little remove the whites, just have the blacks in there. And the next one is from Texture Labs and we're gonna place this one right above all our stuff. So below all the turbulent displays and all that good stuff. And maybe scale this down a little bit cause it is pretty big and we don't need it to be that crazy. Now the point of this texture is actually to give the black parts of this just a little bit more grunge, a little bit gray and washed out. We'll change that to a lighter color and you can see that now it just looks gray. So I'm just gonna hit T to bring up the opacity and set it to something like 65, which is just gonna give us a little bit of texture in the text. So if I hide that, you can see it doesn't really affect anything but the blacks, which is just to wash it out just a little bit. And you can play around with the opacity, it depends on how strong you want the look to be. You've got a super simple, nice little scrolling title animation that you can use for a video if you have a lot of different chapters, which is a perfect way to utilize something like this. And uh, like I was saying before, if you do want to link this up to Mocha Arts or like an essential graphic to make it maybe a little bit easier to switch out the text, it's Super simple, we're just gonna go into the central graphics tab, which you can find up in window, and then go down into the uh, essential graphics right here. It'll open up, you'll select this composition, which is the main composition. You will select these two layers and search for source text. And then the smart thing to do is pick whip one to the other. So if I pick whip this red one to the yellow one, and then drag the yellow one into this. So now we have this list in here, and let's say I misspelled undefeated, then I could just say, uh, change that to champion, and now if you go back in here, it now has champion at the very bottom for both layers. So instead of having two properties, you have to switch back all the time. You link one to one and then the other to the essential graphics and it's just magic. That is pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope that you learned something new, enjoyed it, or feel inspired to go out and create something on your own. Again, you can go to patreon.com forward slash my poll, check out the project file for this and all the other stuff and the flow presets and all that good stuff. And uh, 
I'll see you again next week. Peace out.